Fournette has been cut. Well, good news. Half of you still have your drafts left. Better news for anybody who's already drafted using the Ultimate Draft Kit. You saw Leonard Fournette was in there as a bust. We said, well, stay away. Stay far, far away from this situation. No, thank you, Leonard. They didn't like him and tried to trade him for a bag of potato chips. Here's the point. If you still have your draft left to go, get the ultimate draft kit. Get our tiered base rankings. Get these blur write-ups. Get our risk rating, which was very high on Leonard Fournette. Dominate your draft this week, and it is not too late at ultimatedraftkit.com. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, August 31st. The Fantasy Footballers back with you. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right. I'm Andy Holloway. Busy morning. Not surprised. The NFL is quickly approaching. The regular season is 10 days away. Oh, that's fun to say. I know. I know. We're only 10 days away from Deshaun Jackson scoring twice in week one. Can you believe that? Yeah, uh, look, it's it's looking more <laughs> more likely by the day. Well, let me ask you this, Andy: Do you think the Eagles will score twice in Week One? I do. Well, then there's a pretty good chance it's Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> yeah, or Zach Ertz. We will talk about some more Eagles injury news. We'll get into the big story of the morning: Leonard Fournette has been released by the Jacksonville Jaguars, pew, pew, pew. and. This was a bombshell that hit very early this morning. I got up and I said, oh, I need to I need to get a 32 bold prediction article out again this year. And then as I started to think about that, Leonard Fournette is cut in the 11th hour after they apparently tried to trade him. They, like, this was punishment, it feels they like. They really did him dirty to, at this point, to have not let him test any sort of free agent market. Mm. Look, they're, the quote was coming out saying, well, we just couldn't get anything for him, so move on. If you don't want him on your team, let the player go and try and find a better situation. I I don't, you know, we don't, we don't know, but it just feels personal. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how you hold on to someone until you're 10 days away from the league and then you cut them where they can't do anything. It's a bad situation for Leonard Fournette. He will be signed by someone. I don't think he'll I think he'll clear waivers and then be a free agent. You guys think he, he's got a good chance of being picked I think up, but pretty decent chance of being. But it's not yeah. good, and the situation can only get worse for Leonard Fournette. We will press pause. We'll come right back to it in the news. Talk about Chris Thompson. Talk about the rest of the backfield. Where we think Fournette could end up. I want to remind you: you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. If you missed the Sleeper Bowl draft. Uh, we did that on Saturday. You can watch it right now. Drafted against Juju Smith-Schuster, Ninja, Tim the Tapman, Zach Efron, and a bunch of other great folks in that celebrity draft. Uh, I think it went pretty well. I think it was a good time. And so you can check that out on YouTube. Here's the quick question of the day. Give a what-if scenario for the 2020 season uh, and the fantasy football implications as such. So, Jason, give us... An example. Sure. I, I had fun last night uh, really digging deep into this, questioning and challenging myself. What if A.J. Green is 100% healthy and he is the player he has always been on the field? He's the same age as Julio Jones, who's a first-round value. You're saying, what if A.J. Green is just the dominant A.J. Green he's always been? Because I am uh, not a believer in that. That's not how I project it, but I need to be wise and and say, what would that be? So here's what I did. I took a look at his last two full seasons, which are admittedly 2015 and 2017. It's been a while, but I wanted to really look at if he, if he has a full healthy season, how good is he? I looked at the average target market share, the average yardage market share, the average touchdown market share, put all that together and extrapolated it out to current year rookie projections for Joe Burrow, 
And I said, if he gets what he got in the past, these monstrous numbers, what would Joe Burrow support if he stays identical? Well, here was my result. A.J. Green would have 93 receptions, 1,341 yards, and eight touchdowns, which would make him my wide receiver five, which is outstanding. Now, I don't think that, you know, in the past with those other teams in 2015 and 2017 when he was younger and the backups were Brandon LaFell and, you know, Tyler Croft and change, um, I don't think he's going to have that. I think a realistic, if he's healthy and dominant still, uh, would be more like a 25% market share, which put him still as my wide receiver 10. Uh, I have moved him up because of this exercise in my rankings. Now, I'm not projecting him to be fully healthy. Was it tough uh, to do exercise, Jason? Oh, oh man. <laughs> Only mental squats, okay? And uh, my mental workout was pretty good. I and, still and, and some shimmies. I well, you, still you caught me. sweat. Like, like to work up a mental sweat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in a book. Um so I did move him up. He was my wide receiver 38, which shows, I, uh, you know, I look. That is disrespectful it was, it to was, the man. It was a little bit disrespectful um, in the sense that I, I was projecting him to be done. Be, you know, this is, you know, the, the beginning of the swan song. I moved him up to wide receiver 26. So he's still not someone that I'm projecting to be who he was. But he is a great wide receiver. He's currently healthy, I guess. The yeah. hamstring issue yeah, is for him, and he definitely is in the rear view mirror. But sometimes objects appear closer than they are. I will say this: I'll, I'm going to throw one more thing in there, and I've loved everything about this morning so far. Now, um, if AJ Green does go down, I encourage every fantasy football player to run out and get Tyler Boyd. If he's not drafted, pick him up. The volume will be there for him if AJ Green's down again. But hopefully, he's not. Hopefully, we get to see some vintage AJ Green. The stat line that you put together there is is like AJ Green's stat line every year of his entire career. Proje projected if it was a short season or full season. So yeah, I hope those, that's what we get. There's a lot of questions. Joe Burrow, we don't know. And I've got him projected for a great season. In fact, this moved Joe Burrow up this little exercise mm. to my uh, quarterback 15. Um, but if you look back at those years where AJ Green dominated and, you know, Dalton and, and company was. 4,100 yards, 3,320 yards in 2017, and A.J. Green still dominated. Mike, what about you? What's your what-if scenario for 2019? So my what-if scenario here is, and I've kind of... Is this the same as a wishful thinking scenario? A little bit. Okay. A little you just bit. say for 2019, Andy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. We are me. very accurate on <laughs> what-ifs in 2019 yes. at this point. Uh, what if Jameis Winston throws yeah. 30 interceptions He'll last year? He'll probably get uh, released from the team. Apologies, Brooks. The, uh, I try not to mention 2020, but thanks. I have alluded to this a little bit of kind of just going down the, the dream path. What if Teddy Bridgewater actually goes deep f with frequency for the Carolina Panthers? He was, I mean, he was paid in or paid a lot of money to become their guy. He's surrounded by talent uh, you're surrounded by three wide receivers who can get it done in the vertical game vertical game with DJ Moore Curtis Samuel and free agent Robbie Anderson and then of course you know Chris McCaffrey is there but last year if you look at guys who threw the ball over 150 times he has the second best adjusted deep completion percentage like, he's good at throwing the ball deep he just chooses not to or at least historically we haven't seen him really do that we have seen a little bit of a uh, hype coming out of camp that this is going to be worked in more for te from Teddy Bridgewater. We've seen one of those uh, famous training camp video highlight clips of him going deep, and it was ju it just brought it up again to me of what could this offense actually become if you have an accurate passer going down the field to to Curtis Samuel, who last year I mean he. He was his air yards were through the roof. His completion on on those passes was really bad because his quarterback play was so bad. But what happens to the Carolina Panthers if head coach Matt Ja Rule turn, uh, turns Teddy Bridgewater into, into a deep passer? Then that's what would happen. Yeah, they'll murder yes. these fools. It reminds me of Alex Smith. He was always good at throwing deep. And that just didn't. It, that was, is a, it wasn't his tendency. He that, didn't like to do it. That is a great comp of 
you, you, how many years did we see Alex Smith being a, a great quarterback, a very uh, accurate quarterback? And you're just okay. We know who he is. We've written it off. He is never ever going to be a guy who just airs it out. And then Andy Reid finally unlocked Derek, that door. Derek Carr's in that category too. Sure, and maybe Pretty good deep passer doesn't do it a lot. And that's why I bring up uh, the the coaching change. Of, what if? What? Yeah, Matt Rule. Maybe he unlocks the door, and Teddy Bridgewater starts chucking it down the field. It has to feel good for Teddy to have the job to himself too. He's not coming in after Drew Brees and just making sure that they don't lose. And they right. draft I mean, a quarterback yeah. where he's coming in as the starter, don't lose the job, but yeah. eventually someday they'll they'll switch. He's he's the guy for now. It's a good point. And uh as we transition into news, my what if scenario for twenty twenty is what if Jacksonville really is the worst team in the NFL? What does that mean for the prospects of Gardner Minshew? It's a bit of a chicken or egg, right? Mm -hmm. If Gardner succeeds, they probably won't have the last pick in the draft. But I'm saying what if because there is no team. This is the Vegas favorite to get the number one pick. Their win total in Vegas before cutting Leonard Fournette, before the trade this weekend with the Vikings, uh, dismantling that defense in its entirety. They were projected with the number one pick. So I wanted to look back at the last 10 years. What's the fantasy finish of the team that finishes last at the quarterback position? Right. Which oftentimes is more than one quarterback because the season has gone poorly. <laughs> so I looked at total points at the quarterback position, not just one. Here's the fantasy finishes the last 10 years. 31st, 32nd, 29th, 32nd, 24th, 21st, 32nd, 25th, 18th. All right. 32nd, 24th. Wow. So you just told me that they're not getting the last pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like where you're at. See, my big what if is what if they're actually better now that they don't have to give the ball to Leonard Fournette 200 times? No, that's good data, Andy. It, it, it is. 27th and is the average fantasy finish for the team that finishes last. Now, again, I said it's chicken or the egg. You can believe that Gardner will usurp the odds. But right now, this team looks like a train wreck, and they've been a train wreck for 10 years. You should start talking about Jacksonville and their management and their coaching and their hierarchy in the organization in the same breath that you do the Cleveland Browns. That's the level of futility. And I'm sorry, if you're a Jacksonville fan yeah. or a Cleveland fan, you do know I'm telling the truth. Oh, they know. Honestly, I feel like for the first time ever, you know, that was disrespectful to the Browns. <laughs> that was, like that's you know Jacksonville I, so is I, it, it's just going to be tough it's going to be tough I want people to know the risks it doesn't mean that Gardner can't be better it doesn't mean he can't be the difference maker because of the on the ground work that he'll have if he rushes for 400 yards it just means that the odds are against him literally in Vegas and according to fantasy yeah. finish at the quarterback position I don't disagree that the the, the odds are against Gardner Minshew I mean it we, we looking back historically, but I saw a, an excellent tweet from Emmanuel Acho, who a lot is being made of all the first round busts. It's coming up again for Jacksonville because Leonard Fournette is now a first round bust. You could have drafted Deshaun Watson. You could have drafted Patrick Mahomes. You screwed up really bad, and so then they just the the list of their first round busts was put out, and it's like, man, look at all these whiffs. And Emmanuel Acho was making the point. Maybe it's not all these players' fault. Maybe mm -hmm. the team is doing a terrible job at at coaching their guys up. Maybe they just have had really, really bad leadership, and you can't just keep pointing the finger at guys who are 21 years what, old. What's incredible, though, is that Jacksonville, as an organization, I, I like Jay Gruden, but Jay Gruden was in the exact same situation in Washington. Mm -hmm. Organizational failure, talented head coach. I mean – Gruden's making the rounds. Between Cincinnati, Washington, <laughs> yeah. and Jacksonville, he's like... I know where I could get a job. <laughs> unbelievable. So uh, it, it, there's just a wide variance there for Gardner. And in other words, I think if it starts poorly, you might want to just move on to somebody else. A couple other uh, things before we get into the news. We invite you to join us in the Megalobowl, the largest season-long fantasy football league out there join the foot.com you can become a part of the megalobowl jason i don't know if do you know the current count are we over 
Like 6,000 maybe? I don't know the current count. I know the last time I saw it, we were well over 3,000, but that was that was quite a while ago. So the Megalo Bowl, if you didn't get a chance to get into the Listener League this year, you didn't make the cut, or you're going, I just don't have, I don't I don't know how to make some fan, funny video that's going to impress the guys. Well, look, just win here, and you're in the next. Just win the largest tournament in I known existence. Prove you're the best fantasy player out there. <laughs> All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. We have a lot to discuss by way of news. Like I said, the NFL season is 10 days away, and it's it's going to be a very interesting week one for a lot of teams. Let's circle back now to the Leonard Fournette news. Yeah, did you hear about this? Yeah, Jacksonville waved him, and... Here we are. If you had the UDK, if you've listened to this show at all, we've been talking about Chris Thompson for a long time. Mike is nodding with kind of a like father knows best kind well, of. That, that was that's just one of those like look, we we see the guff and there was definitely some guff given about why do these guys like Chris Thompson so much? Mm -hmm. He's the only running back right now with history uh, with Jay Gruden. Uh, according to camp reports, Chris Thompson has been dominating in red zone work. That Be is an interesting because byline. He for, is uh, very, <laughs> very good. Like he is an excellent running back. Who, if he's on the field, like the the reason Chris Thompson was a sleeper for us is if he's on the field, the team is better than if the than if Leonard Fournette is on the field. Yes, like, it's just that these are facts. He also is part of the big facts is Chris Thompson can't finish the season. He plays like 10 games a year, but he still has a huge impact for his team in those 10 games. He is a more dynamic pass catcher. Leonard Fournette last year, despite the quantity, was terrible. It was like five yards per yeah, it, it reception. Just over, yeah, over six, but still, that if you are getting 100 targets and you're averaging just over six yards of reception, that is a negative play. Oh, for your team. Certainly. I mean, the, there's only two players out there who had a larger percentage of the team's total yardage than Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, and Nick Chubb. Leonard Fournette accounted for a ton of the Jacksonville offense, but he was, at the same time, super inefficient. So if you actually have someone more efficient out yeah. there accounting for that, this could legitimately be uh, a, an upgrade for the team. That being said, if for Chris fantasy. 29 years old. Yeah, Chris Thompson's not playing 16. He's not going to be the guy who fills in for Leonard Fournette. His role is established uh, back from, you know, on Washington. He is going to come I in on the third man. downs. Y you can't make him a three down back. He won't he, survive it. He, he'll he last this, three games. This transaction to me shows we have Raquel Armstead from last year. He, he missed some time in camp, was on the COVID list. Mm -hmm. um, I went back and watched film. He looks okay. And then to me this is this is more confidence in Divine Ozigbo, mm -hmm. who comes out of Nebraska. Went back and watched film on him too. He's a banger. He is a good player. The team must feel confident that they can get whatever inefficiency Leonard Fournette was providing which <laughs> between it, these two gentlemen. Which honestly, this it's a it's an amazing turn. I, we've just been crapping on the Jacksonville leadership for a while, but to realize you can move forward with Armstead and get the same production that Leonard Fournette was giving you, and you don't, you aren't pigeonholed into having to give Leonard Fournette the ball 250 times. Like you could be more creative. Uh, I was smirking when you were talking about Chris Thompson, Jason, because it's like, in the worlds of what if, what if this is Chris Thompson's Justin Forsett year? <sighs> then he will That's be such a very, great... very good for fantasy. Yeah, that is. P people have asked me five thousand questions this morning about Chris Thompson. So I'm going to ask you guys, I'm going to reiterate some of them. Would you drop Alexander Madison to pick up Chris Thompson off a of waiver wire? Yes. Okay. Would you pick up Chris Thompson or would you pick up the other two guys, right? Quell Chris or, Thompson. Okay. Chris Without Thompson, him. unequivocally. How high should Chris Thompson go in drafts based on this news? You know, I don't, I don't think people are going to be clamoring for Chris Thompson. So you don't want to reach ahead of other really quality players. I find that that usually is in the middle of the seventh round for me where there's still really good players in the middle of the seventh. The back of the seventh, eighth round, depending on how your home league 
goes uh, is where there's so many question marks that I'm willing to take him there. Uh, that's not to say I wouldn't take him even ahead of that spot. Would I think you, he will be a quality back if, if he can stay healthy. Would you draft Chris Thompson over David Montgomery today? Wow. Yes, but well, no. Gosh, you're saying over, as in, as in, no. like same. Because we talked spot. about where David Montgomery could drop in a draft. Kind of sounded like the sixth, seventh, eighth round. I, I guess I would take Montgomery there still. But to echo what you were saying, Jay, once you're in the eighth round, like take the guys that you believe in, take the upside, take where there's you don't need to follow uh, just a pure rankings at that point. Like go get the guys you believe can win you a league, which is what that's why Antonio Gibson is in that range, and I I would draft Gibson over Chris Thompson. But I'm saying you you're, you're not. You're not spending a huge opportunity cost in the ninth round. Yeah, you get it wrong there doesn't mean the same thing as getting it wrong somewhere else. Yeah, you might exactly. as well take who you Be believe in. Because the guy that you didn't take and you took him instead, that guy's probably not going to do well either. <laughs> that's the, that's the difference. Yeah. Right. That, uh, you know, and just to speak on this real quick, I do want to point out, Reichwell Armstead has missed most of camp. Yes. Yeah, he was on the COVID list, but he's also injured. He is not there today. He is currently out. When they released Leonard Fournette, and they're looking at who they have, they have barely seen Reichwell Armstead. I, I think uh, Interesting. Divina I, Zigbo. I think Divina Zigbo is is the guy that I would prefer to take the shot on of those two. Which is last pick shot. That's yes, what that is. That's last pick. That's dynasty waiver wire. That's what I'm talking about. There are two more things to discuss here. One, I've seen a lot of people speculate about Devonta Freeman going to Jacksonville. I'm going to handicap that at a 0% chance. Wow. I'll I give think it a 1%. They, he already turned down, a, I believe, a $4 million contract from Seattle. They waived Leonard Fournette and saved $4 million. I don't, unless this was purely spite and not financial, which I doubt because this team is not exactly a Super Bowl contender, why go spend $4 million on a different inefficient running back? I don't have the odds uh, it's a very better, high at all. It's a better pass catcher. I mean, he fits more what Jay Gruden would want to do. Yeah, maybe he was. I don't know if he is. Um, I'll put it at. I'll put it at a good five. Okay, a good fiver. The other side of the coin. The last question here before we move on to um, some other news. Where does Leonard Fournette go? That is the other question. Is, the Bears. Uh, okay, the Bears. I They're, know. It, look, it's chalk. But so, it, <laughs> sometimes chalk is chalk for a reason. It makes Trump just so much sense for the Bears to grab Fournette if they if they don't really have a, a backup plan for David Montgomery unless it is Patterson. So I, it, I believe that he ends up there. He plays for a couple weeks, and then David Montgomery gets his job back. Does that – okay, he plays for a couple weeks. So that doesn't change the answer to your mm -hmm. earlier question about where you draft Montgomery no. relative to Chris Thompson. No, and I'm – so uh, let's say this. Are you going to draft Leonard Fournette in like the 12th round? I've been telling people, as a free agent, let's say you're drafting today. We we took a poll. There are still more drafts to come for Foot Clan listeners than there are have passed. Like this week and this weekend, there are a lot of drafts. You're drafting today. Everyone wants to know, where do you draft Leonard Fournette, the free agent? I've been saying 10th through 12th round. Okay, so you're still willing to draft him and, and see where the chips fall. Yes. Okay. But there aren't scenarios where he's getting 265 carries and 76 receptions. The other teams that are in my in the back of my mind, and you guys bring up some if you have them, Philadelphia. Right now, injury yeah. plague. Gross, please, yeah. no. Injury plague team that needs a running back. Gross. Kick the tires with Freeman. Kick the tires with Carlos Hyde. Oh, the fantasy gods. How if about? he clears waivers, Philadelphia becomes an even higher possibility to me. Sure. How funny would it be if the Falcons, they're like, let's just yes. see what we got in Todd Gurley, Leonard Fournette. Oh, my God. Do either of them have it left? Um, the Rams, who lost Todd Gurley, you know. Uh, that I, was, uh, I believe, Melvin Gordon chimed in on Twitter and said he thinks the Rams will pick him up. Melvin Gordon's out there giving analysis now? Look, he's he needs to do something. He he's, was a running back who knows teams that might have been interested in running backs this Pittsburgh. year. Pittsburgh. What yeah, about Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh's up there. I, they just never seem to make that yeah. flashy signing ever. Yeah, and is it flashy? I don't know. If it's a one million dollar deal after he clears waivers, all right. Let's pause for a second in the news. Let's thank today's sponsors. Uh, it's time to talk about Theragun. We get to bring them oh, up again. I love my Theragun. Uh, the stress of life in fantasy football it weighs on all of us. Whether you're an elite athlete or a regular person trying to get through the day, muscle pain, muscle tension. That's a real thing. 
I've been uh, bending over my uh, Twitter feed for four hours now this morning, <laughs> so I could use my Theragun. It's a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth, speed, and power. And get this, Jason, you don't even know this because they got a new Gen 4. Oh, I got to get it. Quiet. It's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. The new wow. Gen 4 Theragun. So uh, we've all used this for years. If you've watched uh, the NBA, if you've watched uh, the NFL, they're on the sidelines a lot of the times working out muscle uh, issues with the Theragun. Um, it's a great device, Mike. You said yes. before the show how well, much look, you I've use been, it. I've been working on my fitness. My muscles have been getting a little bit sore. So I've been busting out the Theragun, man. It helps. Uh, try Theragun risk-free for 30 days. There's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. It's got an OLED screen, personalized Theragun app, the quiet, the power, it's all there. And it starts at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash footballers right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's T-H-E-R-A-G-U-N.com slash footballers. Theragun.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, maybe you've already done your League of Record draft and you're still itching. You want more draft action. Great news. You want to draft Chris Thompson. Underdog is here for you. Get your best ball lineups. You can still sign up today and enter the best ball mania for a chance at a million dollars in prizes. You go to underdogfantasy.com or you just search for it on your app store. We've been talking about them every single Friday, giving you our hot best ball tips. Best ball is so much fun if you have, if you still have been hesitant to you're a little nervous to jump in. So it's overwhelming. Trust me. It's easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. If you know how to draft, you know how to draft for best ball, and you don't have to manage your team. You just get the best part of well, the draft season, which is doing the draft. And and especially in this COVID season where you're you're not sure, how, what do we do in our home leagues? What do I right. do as a commish? How about your roster just plays the best people that are on it every single week? And right. Oh, that that's that's best ball. Uh, yeah. Underdog. It's It's so much fun to play. Where do they go, Mike? Where do they Underdog go? Underdogfantasy.com. All right. Let's talk about the Eagles because we have to every single time we have news. <sighs> Eagles wide receiver Jalen Rager suffered a shoulder injury. It turned out that that was a partially torn labrum. Um, he's out two to four weeks, but that is really a little bit up in the air too. It's just a matter of can he get back in that amount of time. So crappy because this was a domino effect of – Carson Wentz's day to day with a soft tissue injury. Carson Wentz was not in, and uh, Hertz threw an interception, and then Jalen Rager went to tackle somebody on an interception on just a play that is meaningless and it doesn't have to happen, and he tore his freaking shoulder. This stinks so much. There was much. really no business for that team not to call the playoff right then. I mean, you should not be trying to have your offensive players tackle. Defensive players in a transition drill there, and ah. but, but neither here nor there. They're yes. hurting. They're, somebody's yes. getting hurt every day. They lost their last left tackle. Their their wide receiver core is now um, decimated again. And and, and here's Greg Ward <laughs> with <laughs> targets here's and reception. Greg Ward. Look here, and, he is. and a good camp. And and yet Carson Wentz is now hurt. Like I think I'm just kind of trying not to draft Eagles f if I still have a draft to go. Miles Sanders. Eh? I mean, are you taking him over the other guys in that tier? We just said on Friday that we wouldn't. I'm taking him at the back of that tier. I still believe in him, but it is worrisome when the offensive line is injured. The quarterback is currently just a little, just a little, you know, soft tissue issue. The running back is week to week. Your main starting wide receiver is, I still assume, going to end up on the pup. Remember Alshon Jeffrey, uh, Jalen Rager, superstar young guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the team is certainly a mess on offense. It's it, it you know if you want to avoid that to avoid the injury dip I'm fine with it I am still a believer that Carson Wentz is a great quarterback not a good quarterback in so which case where are you moving Deshaun Jackson he's already been one of our favorite values over the entire off season now where are you prioritizing I, I don't him? think you have to prioritize him I don't think he's moving up he's been a value in the double digit rounds in every league I've been in I don't think this move this news but that was before. Rager was going to be gone for up to four weeks. I'd move him up a round or two. He's the weirdest player because you can draft him in the 10th round and you can start him week one. 
and that is not a lie. You oh, could just put him right in your lineup. It's it, it is really funny because I you know we've obviously gotten Deshaun Jackson in plenty of places, and after the draft, you go to set your week one, and you go, hmm. I think we should put Deshaun Jackson, who I drafted so much later, into my starting roster over, you know, really, really yeah. high end hopeful prospects. And I don't think you can really draft Jalen Rager. I mean, you don't no. know when he's going to be back, and he's a rookie, and he's still got to make his, you know, make an impact, and it's going to take too much time, and it's disappointing because it is. Yeah, I'm sure that there are plenty playing best ball that have Jalen Rager and. You know that might be the one I'd situation still, where you're okay. Yeah, I still believe Rager can make an impact on the season, but he, are you going to draft a rookie to sit on your bench and be injured and then acclimate out? And I'm probably not doing that. We we drafted Jalen Rager in the sleeper bowl, and we've already dropped him for somebody else. I can't wait to win a title there again. <laughs> All right. In no, that's not fair. News. Uh, Ian Rappaport reporting Cooper Cup suffered a. Mercifully, low ankle sprain Oof. Uh, in Saturday's scrimmage. Rams say it's minor. Said had the game been this week, Cooper Cup would have been playing. So if you saw the headline, it seems like there's no reason to be alarmed. But it's, uh, you know, the season's 10 days away nonetheless. DeAndre Swift returned to practice on a limited basis Monday after missing more than a week with a leg injury. Carry on will likely open the season in a starting role. Carry on is... To, uh, the carry same as, a draft value. He's the exact same thing as Deshaun Jackson. He's a player you can draft at the back of the draft and start week one probably. This is a situation. Don't look at or uh, don't look at the 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 problem of carry on Johnson saying, "Well, I'm not carry getting." Yes. Don't look at it in your drafts going. Well, he's not going to be the starter for the entire season. We t I talked so about what? The, Who yeah cares? exactly in our tips and tricks show. I was talking about breaking the season down into chunks for the draft chunk. Carry on Johnson could be a tremendous value. And then, look, maybe three to four weeks into the season, you trade Carry on Johnson. Or in the realm of possibilities, he finally shows out and he is the leader of the of the timeshare. You don't know what's going to happen in Detroit, but people are still drafting DeAndre Swift in like the sixth, seventh round and Carry on Johnson in the tenth or later. Don't ignore him because you he won't be the start of the whole year. That's fine. You still take him. Carry on Johnson is a nice bridge to Jonathan Taylor, yes. Cam Akers, yes. J.K. Dobbins, whoever you're taking, even DeAndre Swift. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean you, we just saw Swift go in the fifth in the sleeper bowl and carry on in the tenth. So yeah, it's just one of those weird late round values, almost like worst case taking the Peyton Barber last year where you could start him for a few weeks. The fantasy burns that Carrion Johnson has left upon. Jason's not speaking players. for a reason. Exactly. That's that's how bad Carrion Johnson has burned people, and that's why he's available in the 10th. I have recused myself from this <laughs> conversation. And all future <laughs> Carrion. Uh, but let us, let Mike and I, who love nothing more than to bash Carrion projections, be the voice of reason. Stay water. He is a starting running back, especially yes. if you go... Christian McCaffrey at 101 and then take a bunch of other positions for a while. Look, this has been a fun episode, guys. I mean, you guys talking, <laughs> I'm up talking carry about carry-on. I'm talking up A.J. Green. This is just like a healing, bonding, Yeah, you know, okay, welcome to the campfire. You know everybody. who's feeling the best of all? It's got to be Al Borman. Because <laughs> isn't Fournette one of the your keepers in League of Record? He was. Well, <laughs> yeah. Wait, did you release him? He, oh, no. Wait, okay. You still have your first round pick, right? At least you can get a running back there. I gave that up to get Fournette. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to who? <laughs> to me. That's right. Um, we love you, Al. Yeah, we Whoopsies. do. Not enough not to bring it up, but we love you just right up to that line. All right. Devontae Parker has missed the last few practices dealing with a minor undisclosed injury. Secret injury for Devontae Parker. Mm. It's not great, but... Keep it secret. Keep yeah, it we, safe. we don't know. <laughs> We don't know any more details than that. We're speaking of keep it secret, keep it safe. Matt Nagy, head coach from the Chicago Bears. Look, he's not going to tell anybody who the starting quarterback is for week Ooh. one. What are you doing? If you don't have a starting quarterback named for week one, guess who's scared of your team? Nobody, because you don't have a starting quarterback on your roster. Now, here's here's the truth. I listened to the the press interview, Ugh. and the way he's talking about it, he's like, obviously, we have a week one starter, but to the press, we're not going to tell 
you guys who that is. It's one of those, you know, this is going it's, to. This is exactly what Matt Nagy does every week in press conferences. He spends more time trying to confuse the media and the other team than coaching his own yeah, players. Yes. Is this your card? No? <laughs> all right, hold on. We're going to spend all of the offseason holding a kicking competition. That's the real problem we have. Uh, oh so God. dumb. It's, it's really so dumb. dumb. And what if you're a defense, what's the difference between preparing between those two? That's my that's my entire point. Or if if it is in fact like if Trubisky is the guy that you're gonna go forward with, and I I believe it's gonna be Trubisky. They're still gonna try it's it. It's easier to go from Trubisky to Foles than Foles to Trubisky, if that makes sense. But I think it's gonna be Foles. But okay. They but, might be Foles all year. Well, look, Matt Nagy's winning because we don't know who the starting <laughs> oh, quarterback. Oh, we're perplexed. But my point for Is this your card? No. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know what your card was. My point for if it's Trubisky, give the dude some confidence. Go out there and proclaim to the world our starting quarterback is Mitch Trubisky. It, I just I think that goes a long way instead of this garbage where you think you're getting an advantage. Well, in that same press conference, Nagy was talking about you know both guys have have done some good things, uh, and and both guys have you know they've had some some plays they would want back. Basically, no one here is good enough to lead the Bears uh, to where they want to go. I'm sorry, Bears fans. This is just – I I can't stand when the coaches do this. Who would have thought that uh, this guy – Number two. <laughs> would be this far down in the storylines. But I, it's been a wild ride with Lev Bell and the backfield in New York. But it is – it's all over the map. People were surprised to hear us talk about uh, he, he Lev Bell so negatively a, f a few days ago with where he is in our rankings – now you have news out of Jets camp, a couple pieces of news. Well, Michael Pirine, who had been flashing in camp, he's got an MRI coming on his ankle. He was carted off the field. That's not a good sign for the rookie. Kalen Balanch, who the Jets <clears throat> traded for, he failed his physical. After he was cut. Yeah. He was cut. Then he was traded for. What's the current status, Andy? He's now a Dolphin again. He's been reverted <laughs> back to the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Busting out a slide where, whistle. Where, 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 where have you been hiding that thing? It's Velcroed under the table, my friends. Is that for the Jets only? Th this is for anybody who deserves a slide. Oh. How did you not bust it up for Matt Nagy? I thought about it, but I knew we were getting to Belage, so there you go. Now I can slide whistle who? anyone at any. This power. Who did this? Who who brought? Is this you, the, Owl? This was Who's the this judge. Brooks? It's this, a combination. I would say there's no oh, way Jason went effort. out and bought it himself. Oh it, no, I I I, I tremendous made tremendous work by the footballers team. The big shimmy slide whistle, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> oh man. Hong Hong. Okay. Aruga. Okay. Let's bring. <laughs> I know we have really stepped up our production <laughs> levels here. Uh, I still think Lev Bell's okay. I think he's I, fine. Yes. I mean. There's the, the Jets, you know, they know how to make Le Lev Bell happy. They tweeted a nice video of him making an incredible catch this weekend, and Lev Bell retweeted it. That's how we know he's fine, right? Tweets. It, 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 it was a very impressive video. But Adam Gase came out, and he talked about the fact that him and Lev had a, more conversations. I didn't, You know, look, you want to win. You want a shot at winning. Lev Bell's got to be on the field. It can't be a 37-year-old Frank Gore taking every carry. Now, in the video, Lev Bell was on the field with Frank Gore. As yeah. well. He was playing wide receiver. And Which, with their wide receiver core. Makes sense. It makes sense. Lev Bell's a great receiver. I, I'm still fine with Lev Bell. And if everybody's off of him, and he's a fourth-round pick, okay. I mean, l let me have that opportunity at, at upside in a pass-catching league with a pass-catching Yeah, guy. I'll reiterate what I said at the end of that bust segment. I have him ranked higher in my running back rankings than where he is currently being drafted. The reason I think he's a bust is because of all the question marks with the offense, the team, with Frank Gore, and the wide receivers that are right next to him. Guys like Cooper Cup and Tyler Lockett, who I believe in that range are are far more assured. assured. There's just less variables there to me. All right, we still have uh, – we got the hype train for Brian Edwards. He's been the starting X receiver in Raiders camp. Very talented player. Very, he could have as much of a rookie impact as any rookie out there. He could very well just take Tyrell Williams' job before week one. I will say this. Stay tuned this week for the Bold Predictions <sighs> episode. Okie dokie. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. 
Uh, Mike. Oh! oh! Cow- Cowboys EVP Stephen Jones says that Blake Jarwin has had an amazing camp. You're darn right he has. How's it feel riding Falcor? Oh, it's it's sensational. Uh, the wind is just my my hair. My I mean, COVID hair is just blowing all over the place. The amount of potential success Blake Jarwin has right now is incredible. And that's really what matters to me right now. Look, Take the victory lap right now, Mike. Twitter with Blake Jarwin has been very, very, A delight. very, very fun because it's just nonstop positive press. And I look, it's just hype right now. I fully believe that Blake Jarwin will break out this season. When asked about Leonard Fournette, always good for a quote, head coach Bruce Arians said, we'll wait and see. He has been a good player. We'll just have to wait and see where he fits. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. Um, Bruce, stop. Stop it, Bruce. Uh, that could be a problem. That though. sounds like a waivers issue. Yeah. yeah, that that could be a problem. It's it's not in our doc, but I wanted to bring up this piece of hype. Do you guys make anything out of the fact that with for the Rams, we know that Daryl Henderson is banged up. They're hoping he's back week one. But then there was a note that Malcolm Brown worth a conversation. is running – as the featured running back with the ones, and in- it's to use the word running loosely. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've I've brought him up off this air. Like, we we did it last year where we were like, look, let's stop. Malcolm Brown is a fine player. I mean, the, yes, but all last year it was Daryl Henderson. Darryl, like it, the, the yes. Twitter is injured. The Twitter sphere was Daryl Henderson, and we we brought up like. They really like Malcolm Brown. Follow the money of what they did. I believe it was last year where he was given a tender. He was signed by the Lions, and the Rams said, no, 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 no. We need Malcolm Brown. And he was, in fact, really the backup for Todd Gurley. Is he is he in front of Cam Akers? Are we overlooking yes, Malcolm we are. Brown? Yeah, yes. I, I 100% think that we as a collective are, are overlooking him. And I fully expect him to get the first carry week one and – Probably the most carries. The reason that we're overlooking him is the same reason you guys are overlooking Adrian Peterson, who will have 200 carries again this year. That's fair. You don't want him. That's why you overlook him. You don't actually want to draft him, so we don't want to talk about him because we don't want to we don't want to draft him because his upside is not Cam Akers' upside. It is Malcolm Brown's upside, <laughs> which I mean fits in the category. If you can get a start out of him, I bet you can. There was a lot of rushing touchdowns scored yeah. last year by Todd Gurley. And, You're 100% right. And quite a few of them were taken by Malcolm Brown. And those were the weeks you could start Malcolm Brown. Like, so if there's more of those weeks, ugh. you could probably do worse. Malcolm Mike Brown. Mike doesn't even like talking about it. I do, well, it's just imagining if if we – do we have another uh, Bill situation where we love Cam Akers, we love his potential – what, but what if he's the between the 20s guy and then Malcolm Brown's coming in on third down and he's taking all the goal line there, work? There's a problem. That'll be brutal. Yeah, there, there's something that could happen here, and it is basically Cam Akers is a rookie. His snaps are limited to start the year in that time when Daryl Henderson is limited. By the time Henderson's back, that's when you have a three-headed monster and a problem. That is the painting the worst-case scenario. Now, mm-hmm. the best-case scenario is Cam Akers breaks off a 65-yard touchdown in week one and the they rest is history. Back, yeah. yeah. All right. Colts are still weighing the severity of the Trey Burton injury. Sounds like it could last into the regular season. Yes, and this brings up a favorite of the show because Jack Doyle has been dealing with his own injury, but the player back from injury, Mo Ali Cox, aka Gigantor. Gigantor. And look, a lot. <laughs> I know. I know Andy is grimacing, but hear me out. Well, I'm grimacing because I like tried to, I tried to believe in him last year and it didn't work out. But here's the difference: Philip Rivers is the quarterback, and they've been talking a lot in camp how Philip Rivers is once again featuring his running backs and the tight ends in the passing game because that's what Philip Rivers has done his entire freaking career. Whoever the starting tight end is for the Colts will have. Fantasy Mo Ali Cox but has 15 receptions in his NFL yeah, career. I was going to say, I agree with you. Whoever the starting tight end is for the Colts will be valuable for fantasy. It's not Mo Ali Cox. Correct. But Mo Ali Cox is the largest. And that he's is because he's the largest man in the NFL. Predicting that, four receptions this year for four touchdowns. That is my I think that's fair. Mo Ali Cox prediction. But uh, Doyle is back in camp. And so if Burton's gone and Mike is right about what Phillip Rivers does, 
then this is Jack a baby Doyle, hand situation. Yeah. yeah, I like it. It's been a wild ride today, guys. Raheem <laughs> Mostert, really Raheem Mostert, still starring and starting in 49ers camp. Are you drafting Jeremy McKinnon anywhere? People were asking Jeremy McKinnon I, or Chris Thompson. I haven't. Oh, Chris Thompson. Oh yeah, for by, that a, question. by a lot. I haven't drafted McKinnon anywhere, but I I guess this is just a he he's the third guy on the depth chart. He probably will see the field more than fantasy players are hoping he's on the field, but I just don't see him having standalone fantasy value. You weren't going to draft Jeff Wilson if McKinnon wasn't there, so it's the same type of thing. Exactly. Who might not make the team. All right, let's do some mailbag. 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 All right, if you have a question for the show, if we can help you out, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can dial the voicemail hotline as well. 302-464-TFFB. Jumping into a voicemail. Hi, Ballers. This is Tyler from Minnesota here. Trade question. I have Kyler Murray, and I'm looking to trade for Patrick Mahomes. If I include Kyler Murray in the deal, what other level of player would I need to include in the trade to make the trade fair? Thanks. Love the show. You are definitely from Minnesota. Yes, I love it. Don't you know. Uh, what do you got to include with Kyler to get Mahomes? Unfortunately, you got to include a really good piece and that's you know that's why when we're drafting we don't usually draft Mahomes because you are giving up a really good piece uh that's you know a, a second or a third round pick and obviously if you pair it with Kyler you don't have to necessarily give up a second but I think you're going to have to give up uh, absolutely an every week starter there's no depth option that where you're going to pair him with a flex type player and Kyler and get the trade to go through yeah, I actually try to go the other direction on these trades most often because Mahomes has such value in the eyes of everybody for good reason. You can sometimes get Kyler plus a huge piece mm -hmm. and then bank on the Kyler breakout. Would you trade Kyler and Fournette? Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, Kyler and T.Y. Hilton for Patrick Mahomes. I wouldn't. I'm pretty low. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, you, and, if, you, and if you wouldn't do that, then no. Yeah, you're not you, one. You're not getting a trade done because if you're offering a, a player a lower level than Ty Hilton, it just just keep Kyler. Just enjoy the ride, man. Yeah. All right. Another voicemail. Hey, what's up, footballers? Big fan. It's your boy Slim Brink. I just wanted to ask you guys: What do you think is more likely, Chris Godwin to finish as the number one wide receiver, or Mike Evans to lead the league in touchdowns? Thanks. Interesting. Yeah, that's a fun one. More likely. Um, I guess it's more likely to me that Evans would lead the league in touchdowns. That's where I am, too. But I do – both of these are long shots. I don't know how long shot – I mean, Chris Godwin right now in our rankings is already a top eight wide receiver. So I, I lean that way of, you know, if the touchdowns – you know, I who who's going to have more touchdowns? We would predict Mike Evans between the two of them. Who, but it could it could very easily end up being Godwin. Whereas who's going to have the most receptions is definitely going to be Godwin. So if the touchdowns happen to go Godwin's way, I lean Godwin. Godwin was the number two wide receiver last year. Exactly. So I don't think it's a tremendous long shot to say with Tom Brady he could be number one. All right, Instagram question: Cam Akers or David Montgomery in a PPR league? It's a great question. Oof. Montgomery could – he doesn't feel good right now. Right. But assuming they don't sign Leonard Fournette, Montgomery could be the same 270 to 300 touch running back in week two. I mean, despite what we just said about Malcolm Brown being disrespected and being more involved than we want, I, it's still Cam Akers to me because I believe you, know, you followed it up perfectly. The same reason that we aren't caring about Malcolm Brown is we don't care about Adrian Peterson. We're looking for the upside and – we love Cam Akers' talent. So I'm, I'm hoping that the breakout happens, and I'll take the guy that's helping. I'll, I'll do a cheat question here. If I would it, take Montgomery. Yeah, that, that's where I am uh, in a vacuum. But if this is your – if because Montgomery drops, if this is your RB5, then I might go Akers. Yeah, that's fair. Something to that extent, RB4, RB5. Uh, would you now take Zach Ertz – this is from YouTube. Uh, would you now take Zach Ertz over Mark Andrews with the Rager injury? I wouldn't. Ooh. I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't take him over Mark Andrews um, necessarily. If it's a full PPR, I, I, I might, but you know, our normal leagues are, are half PPR, but I would take Zach Ertz's value because he's still going at least a full round behind Mark Andrews when I've been in any real live draft. And I love Zach Ertz's value this year. Did you guys see the news about uh, Jonathan Taylor struggling with drops in camp? I've heard. It honestly doesn't bother me. Okay. It's not the best news. No, yeah, it's, no not, it's, it's not good news. No, it's it's okay. but I I'm on the I'm on the team of like drops are kind of overrated. Hmm. Okay. I think I think uh I think it'll be interesting to see how that backfield plays out. Hi ballers, this is Nick from Brooklyn. I was wondering what are weaknesses in yourself when it comes to fantasy football and what do you hope to improve on this season? For me, I'm overly patient with players that I hope to bring the yeah. magic, and they just don't. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's tough. It's easy to be. It's easy to have that weakness because we spend so many months mm -hmm. with hopes and dreams for a player. I mean, I don't know how patient Mike would be with Blake Jarwin. Probably pretty patient. Yeah, a bit. I would say my a weakness I need to improve on is the weak in. We tell people about it, but the week one confirmation of, say, you no, know, last year it was Sammy Watkins. We liked him as a deep shot in leagues of don't forget about Sammy Watkins. He absolutely goes off week one and it looks great on the field. And it was, dude, I'm not trading Sammy. <laughs> I'm not, I don't care what you come at me with. I'm taking Sammy Watkins. I'm taking this victory lap all the way to the championship. And it, it, it happens with me too frequently of a player I like they they break out and I don't even consider trading that player at peak value for me I, I've been wondering and this is part of why I did this exercise last night I've been wondering if it's my risk aversion in the middle rounds compared to the reward T.Y. Hilton A.J. Green all of the running backs who have changed teams I, I I just don't want any of them. Like I, I I pass on absolutely every single one of those players in every draft I've been in, and I'm questioning if at the end of the year someone like a James Connor and an AJ Green were great options. Um so I you know, that's I guess T B D, but I'm self evaluating there. I have mentioned before I have trouble with the non prototypical, you know, the wide receiver twos and the uh, kind of pass catching dependent running backs. My my problem there is I have a really hard time, even if I make the jump to draft them or roster them, I have a hard time putting them into the lineup. It's hard for me to make the decision on a weekly basis to throw somebody in. Um, I guess I'll use Naeem Hines as an example for this year, as opposed to the Adrian Peterson or the Malcolm Brandt, knowing that that ball is going to be handed to that player. Sure, it might go for 2.1 yards, but the guaranteed of, of opportunities versus waiting and hoping for that pass catch, sure. you catching take, opportunity. You take touches over talent. Uh, I do take touches over talent, and sometimes that's burned me. Right. So, uh, but those are our only weaknesses. Yeah, of to course. To be clear, yeah. there are no other list. And really, I mean, we're just, they're not that weak. No, we just had us. to make something up. I wasn't uh, even sure if mine was a weakness to be determined. Uh, it we, could be a strength. <laughs> it's not a bug; it's a feature. <laughs> we uh, a, a player we should have brought up. I'm gonna we got to circle back to the the top of this. Uh, Lavisca Chenault. Wide receiver for Jacksonville. We when we were talking about Leonard Fournette is gone. Chenault in college did see a you know at least a, a handful, a little spattering of uh, of attempts. You know his second year, seventeen attempts, twenty three. His final year in the in college attempts. in rushing attempts. Jacksonville spent a second round pick to get him on the team. I don't. I'm not saying oh Chenault they're going to convert him into a running back. I'm saying he is. The drum beat has been rising for Chanel. They'll be manufacturing and, touches and, for him, and now they they may see more of those manufactured Percy Harvin type of touches. Like we just got to get him the ball and see what happens. So I, Chenault is interesting to me now, as if you want to draft one of the rookies. Uh, I think I think it's a good point, and I have him down for uh, twenty five, twenty six rushing Ooh. attempts on the year. So that means a couple times a week, either in the screen game, right, end arounds, or wildcat type of format. Chenault will have some interesting opportunities. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. Thank you, Pristine Auction. You are awesome. 
Genuinely. They have a fire sale promotion right now. First fire sale pristine auction is ever done. Did you know that? I uh, did not. I'm on my way. Tons of items that usually have reserves will be offered with no reserves. Bidding starts at $20. Oh, man. That lasts through Thursday, September 3rd. Go to pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit with a bidding starting at $20. That is a ridiculous opportunity to get some sweet sports memorabilia. Jason's these over are, here looking right now. These are legit items. So check that out, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Boy, what will tomorrow hold? Oh, we'll have to wait and find out, Andy. <laughs> Talk to See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.